Have you ever wondered what a school resource officer really does? Tune in now as we talk with Sergeant Devin Chins with the Statesville Police Department as he gives us a glimpse of a day in a life of a school resource officer. Welcome to Front and Center, the podcast that pulls back the curtain on government operations, offering you an exclusive glimpse into the inner workings of the city of Statesville. Hello, welcome everyone. I am Nikayla Griffin and I have my lovely co-host here, April Nesbitt. Hello. We have a great honor today with Sergeant Shins today. He is our SRO supervisor for the Statesville Police Department. Welcome, Sergeant Shins. Hey, how are you doing? Good. We are so glad you're here. And you guys act like you don't know each other, I but know. y'all work together so much. So, yeah. You know. This is my partner in crime, for real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some yeah. Days. yeah. <laughs> when you come see me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know. But we are so glad that you are here today. So we're just going to get into it and we're ask pick you some your brain. questions. Yeah. Come on. You ready? I'm always ready. <laughs> okay, I'm already. Oh, I don't know. All right. So first off, you're going to tell us a little bit about your background as a Statesville police officer and how you got to being a supervisor for the SROs. Okay. So I started at the uh, police department in 2012. Uh, like everybody else, I went through and was a patrol officer. I uh, was a patrol officer until mm, 2016. At um, that point, I was reassigned to be a school resource officer. I was a school resource officer at Presley Alternative School at that mm -hmm. point in time. Um, I was there till 2017. And in 2017, opportunity came up to put in for a promotion for corporal. I put in for it, um, got promoted, and was moved to the Criminal Investigations Division. Um, I, some of y'all remember about 2017, it was kind of a Wild time, yes. especially <laughs> stuff going on in the city. Yes. And a, in, in early 2018, they created a new unit for the Violent Crimes Unit. And I was one of the investigators that were placed on that and worked there until 2020. Went back to criminal investigations, um, general investigations. And in 2021, um, they created the Forensics Unit. And... That's where you rocked. Well, I think you love that. That's, didn't the, you? that's the stuff I like to do. Some people are really good at talking to people in an interview room. I'm not that guy. Right. I, put me on a scene. I like working a crime scene. Gotcha. Um, so, with that, they they put me in in the forensics unit as the um, corporal. So I was kind of a supervisor there as well, low level supervisor, and I worked that until 2022. Um, when another opportunity came open for a sergeant's assessment, and I put in for sergeant. And at that time, I got promoted and was reassigned to the school resource officer unit. Mm -hmm. So you've basically been all around the police department. You've done a little bit of everything. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. It sounds <laughs> like it. I do remember you teaching our forensics class, the forensics part of our, um, when we did the What's it called with Chan? Oh, the Citizens Academy? Yeah, the, the, the Citizens Academy. And I remember doing that. And that's where I first met you, I yeah. believe. And so, yes, and that that's some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So. so, yeah, and I still I still do the forensic side on some things. Um, so I, I still help um, investigations out and violent crimes unit out with um, cell phones and digital forensics. And okay. just yesterday I was actually teaching the new hires forensics class mm -hmm. and evidence class. So Fun. Hmm. All right. I'm still still hanging out there as well. <laughs> well, that's your, kind of your baby. I know you like doing that. So. I do. It's <laughs> your baby. No, that's my baby. <laughs> I mean, there, there wasn't that unit before. Right, so right. I to, and you created yes. it. I love it. I love it. So how many SROs do we have in the city, in our city schools? Including me, um, mm -hmm. because I do um, substitute as a, as a school resource officer, mm -hmm. especially if one of the guys are out. Um, we have eight. Okay. Awesome, awesome. What schools are those? We got Statesville High School. Got you've got three positions at Statesville High School. Mm -hmm. You've got two at Northview Academy. You have one that's shared between um, MB Mills and East Elementary. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have um, Oakwood um, IB School, and then we also have a SRO at um, Statesville Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. perfect. All right. Awesome. So, give us the primary duties of an SRO. What, what does that look like? I mean, what do you what do you do all day as an SRO? So, our, our primary responsibility, of course, is safety within the school. Um, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people um, think we're there as counselors and things like that. No, that that comes secondary. Our primary thing is to make sure that when when people send their kids to school, that that is a safe environment and hopefully no harm comes to anybody. Gotcha. 
Um, secondary to that, then yes, we, we offer, we're there as a community resource. Um, a lot of my um, SROs uh, manage clubs. They will help if somebody, if one of the students having a problem, they come and talk to them. They will try and find resources for that student or that family. So mm -hmm. there, there is that secondary objective as well. So there are times that they would rather come and talk to one of you guys as, as opposed to a guidance counselor. I mean, sometimes. And, sometimes. And, and we keep our doors open for that because you never know who, who a, a student's going to be more comfortable around. Right. And I agree with that. That should, should be who the student's comfortable with. I, I like that. Yeah. And I've, I've noticed even in the school, me going to State So High, that the kids are so excited to go to the SR office because one of the reasons is because they have snacks for them. Oh, nice. <laughs> we, we, okay. we, do, we do keep snacks yeah. stocked. Um, yeah. Michaela definitely helps us out with that. We're um, trying. And, and, <laughs> and that is one thing, like kids, you wouldn't expect to come and talk to police mm -hmm. officers. Can I get a bag of chips? Or well, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And you'll find out a whole bunch. So that that's like, it's so important to make sure those incentives uh, yeah. are there so you it's can. It's the little things yeah. sometimes. I mean, you're, you're making that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right I mean, if it, if it gives them 30 seconds of interaction and we can start building that relationship, that rapport, yes. then in the end it's obviously worth a bag of chips. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Takis are the best. Yeah, well, <laughs> you can keep I know. Oh, they, no. they, they love them. They love they them. They do love them. <laughs> so what are some of the um, misconceptions about the role of an SRO officer um, in the schools? So so there's a couple different ones. Um, one of the biggest that we always hear and from, from kind of everywhere is we're just there to take people to jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we're, we're not there for that. Our, like I said, our primary responsibility is safety. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you're doing something that's unsafe, it is now our job to make it safe. Now, right. whether that is an arrest or, or removing a situation or handling a situation, then that's part of our job. The other one is that we work for the school. Mm -hmm. We don't work for the school. We are city, city of Statesville employees. We work at the City of Statesville Police Department mm -hmm. um, or that we're security guards. Right. We're not security guards. We are police fully yeah. licensed police officers. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about the special training. Do, do you have to go to like a different kind of course or before you get promoted to an SRO? I mean, do you have to take special courses, training of any sorts? So the way state law is written right now is an officer can become an SRO. Um, they have to have what's known as their general certificate. Okay. So they have to have um, a, a year of law enforcement experience, um, such as being a patrol officer okay. or from another department where they have the state has recognized, okay, you've met all the qualifications, here's your general certificate. Then once they have that, they can be moved to a SRO position. Um, now, once they're moved to that position, I have a year to send them to basic school resource officer okay. training. So there is a, a mandated training as well as, um, I believe, our uh, memorandum of understanding with the ISS and it may be included in that law, we have to send them to um, crisis intervention training mm -hmm. as well. Okay. So there are trainings that they have to go to, and that also doesn't stop there. Okay. So um, I just had a couple officers get back from advanced school okay. resource officer training. There is actually a state-level um, advanced um, school resource officer certificate. And I, and so they it has a list of coursework includes, you know, um, legal classes it includes classes on juvenile law, juvenile, um, related things, including, um, dealing with kids with the exceptional needs, um, all sorts of stuff of that manner that they can complete and get that advanced certificate as well. What about things like active shooter training. I know people, that's one of my biggest fears in school is a, a, an active shooter in my child's school. So do you have like a special training for that or is that just basic knowledge of a law enforcement officer? So yearly we do, as just as at the department, we have active shooter training. Um, so we do that yearly in house. Okay. And there are advanced courses on that as well through the Justice Academy and other colleges surrounding okay. us. So there, I mean, they can get really, really in depth. And, and like I said, we do it yearly anyway. So, and I believe several of those are part of the advanced SRO certificate okay. as well. Awesome. 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 So how do you build trust with a student that probably has had a negative experience um, with law enforcement? And potato chips. 
<laughs> we bribe them. Yeah, no. yeah I listen. Other than the potato chips, like how do you build that trust? Um, because I know that it's very difficult, especially when students have been brought up in knowing that, hey, the police officers are bad they're or they're not us. people yes. that are really for us. Like how do you bridge that gap? Because kids are typically, um, I've learned, like, they feel safer at school. Mm-hmm. So um, sometimes, you know, bringing that out of them, like how do you build their relationship? I'm so- so, I mean, I think the easiest way to, to start even building that relationship, um, I mean, I've had kids in the past that when they walked in the, for the day, they wouldn't even tell you good morning. Mm-hmm. But if you sit there and you say good morning enough, eventually they're going to start saying good morning. Yeah. And that opens up mm-hmm. conversation segues from there. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the biggest thing is, is talking to them as a person, not, mm-hmm. not as I'm, I'm your school resource officer or I'm a cop or anything right. like that, but just trying to have that general dialogue just to talk to them and build that relationship. It's not something that's going to be fixed overnight. Mm-hmm. And, and all, all my SRS know that. <clears throat> so even our, our kids that are like that, we still treat just like we will anybody else. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, what's good, I hate saying this old saying, but what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If mm-hmm. I'm going to treat you out on the street in, in a civilized, courteous manner, I'm going to do it to this kid Absolutely. or this person. And then on the same side of that, if, if this kid or whoever messes up I'm and, and I have to you know, uh, enforce the law there. Mm -hmm. And if you do it out on the street, I'm going to do the same Same thing. thing. Mm -hmm. So it's showing that there is fairness, that it's not just targeted, that we are actually people as well. Mm -hmm. And and that, you know, we're we're here as a benefit to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a great thing that you guys are doing this summer, um, you'll see them downtown, you'll see them in neighborhoods, the SRO officers, um, at the library, at the YMCA, because they're still trying to make those connections with our students. So we're, I'm going to throw this out there because this is a great thing that I think that they're um, going to be doing. They're going to be doing like popsicles with SROs. So we're going to, they're going to be going to different neighborhoods um, and just having popsicles, playing basketball or doing something with kids. So I that, that they, schedule. I know. I'll let I'm you know. I'm going to have to go and get me an ice cream uh, right. popsicle. It's, it's just an icicle. <laughs> um, don't pictures. get too excited. Take pictures. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, it's just building that rapport because we don't want to lose that relationship Absolutely. and they don't want to lose that relationship with the students because I've had, um, uh, one of the SROs, it was a student that we know that has these issues as a, a ch- young child, you know, coming up, didn't like the police, didn't like anybody, and the family doesn't either. But right. it was a situation. And it's ingrained yeah, in their ingrained, mind. Yeah, a situation happened, and she saw that that the police <laughs> were on her side, and it gave her a different perspective of, of the officers. Now, I tell her, you know, we don't expect you to run up and give us a hug or run up and give them a hug. There are but, so many that do. Yeah, and they want to. <laughs> but they, she now she just pops her head in the office, hey, I'm good. And oh, that would I have never that. happened. So that. building that relationship, and it's, it's they're doing such a great job. I can toot their horns a lot. <laughs> and going back to what you said, just because school's out for summer, our job is, is yeah, a stop. Yeah, it doesn't stop. Um, we're still trying, like I said, being involved with, with the kids, our students, because, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we see every, you know, we're out in public all day long. We're going to see people when they go to Walmart, mm-hmm. when they're here, when they're at home. Yep. And and so we try and continue that conversation, those relationships. Mm-hmm. So yep. it, it doesn't stop. It's making, we're the making part it is When you see them out in public and you're in your plain clothes and yeah. they like a double take at you, right. like, do I know you? <laughs> right. Wait a minute. You don't look right. <laughs> Well, you've already told us what you do first thing in the morning. You say hello to everyone. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. But what's your normal routine? Um, so, the day so normal routine, um, and and it varies from school to school depending on what that school needs. Mm-hmm. So it's states for high school, for instance. Um, my guys come in and I go in, and we get in our office. Of course, you know everybody does all the boring stuff in the morning. We check <laughs> emails, we mm-hmm. look at phone calls, we you know put our lunch away. But after that, when when students start coming in. We, we, we have um, places that we go to in the school. Um, one of my SROs will be down at the bus stop where they get off the bus and gotcha. doing the same thing. Good morning. How are you doing today? Mm-hmm. And, you know, kids stop and talk to them. They have a conversation. And somebody else might be over here on the other side of the school where other kids are coming in okay. doing the same kind of stuff. Some one, The other one might be on a hallway where we might have had some issues. So just sitting there making sure just a typical everything's day. good. Just, yeah. just 
like everybody else going into work. Hey, how you doing this morning? Yep. Just the same. Okay, I gotcha. mean, I, that's what it is. Um, yep. the, the kids, I mean, for lack of a better term, that is their job is, it is. coming to school. Oh, I know it and, is. Ask my kids. <clears throat> right, that's right. their job. <laughs> yeah. They work all day, if you ask them. <laughs> Absolutely. And, <laughs> and so and tired. Some of them do. I mean, yes. they, they work it like a job. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So, oh, my goodness. But, I mean, so, yeah, it's the same, same thing. And then, you know, of course... If we see them out in the hallway, we do the same thing. Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? You good? Everything no, happened? What are you doing out here? No. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. We leave that to school, the school yeah, administration. I understand we, that. We don't, yeah, you don't do all that. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. If, you can't approach kids like that. No. I told these 21st century children, no. you have to approach them a little differently because they're going to be like, well, I'm doing this. You know? <laughs> they're not like us. Well, you know, so we, you have to approach them a little yeah. different to get a different reaction. So, yeah, and, that's, yeah. And that's another thing, too, uh, going back to your misconception question, is a lot of people think that we even for school rules. We, we don't. No, no. We, we stay as far away from school rules as possible. If it's not breaking a law, then, then You're we... You're there to enforce city law. Right. Yeah, the law. City and state law. City and state yep. law. Gotcha. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Gotcha. So a typical interaction with a student. Have you ever had any funny conversations? And I'm pretty sure you have because you've been <laughs> at some of the there has most to be some funny stories. schools in Statesville. I've, I've had funny interactions. Um, probably <laughs> just uh, I don't know if I, they're good for this show. I mean, you probably have. <laughs> <laughs> we should divert to the Kayla and get yeah, her to yeah, answer this question. Better, better answers on that one that she can share. <laughs> Devin yeah. would like to keep his job. Yeah, yeah, I'm just teasing. Right, you know. yeah, well, we're just going to scratch that question out. Uh, <laughs> well, what I about will you, say this. I will say that the students really, like, they will make sure that um, this year that me working, well, being at Stakes will highlight, they have made it a point to make sure that they come and say something to an SRO officer. And we have one student that he is going to be a comedian when he gets older, and he's going to make Stakes so great. I won't say his name yet, but you'll be hearing from him. But he... <laughs> capacity yeah, or another. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he walks up to the SROs and like just stands in front of them and does this silly dance. And I'm like, why did you just do that? He was like, everybody got to loosen up. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, he, and then like, but it's getting to the point now that they'll start dancing with him. With him and see, I'm like, it's the same as you saying good morning yeah, every morning yeah. and loosen them up. Yeah. He's loosening yeah. you guys up. So, I mean, and, I, and I love that. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, we've had SROs that would be out there dancing in the parking yeah, lot with yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so good because they really enjoy that. The kids, yeah. Find a way to relate. Mm -hmm, yeah, and they love dance, music, and talkies, so that's the way we relate. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Dance, mu music, and talkies. I'm, I mean, and they like to sing and crack jokes, but it's so great that we have officers that they know when to turn it on and turn it off. Oh, yeah. and, 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 you know, it's so important to be able to do that. So they come up with so many conversations, and I'm like, you guys are forgetting that you're talking to an officer, but they have gotten so comfortable with them, you know, right. and then it's nothing disrespectful, but it's just like, I do, well, you know. And that's one of the biggest things when we go through a selection process looking at SROs mm -hmm. is, is, is this person going to be a good fit or mm -hmm. do I have a fit for them? Maybe, right. maybe not this school, maybe this school. Right, yeah. So that, that's a lot of the decision making goes in because not, not everybody can do that. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that we're all serious all the mm -hmm. time, but there's, Certain personalities yeah. that mesh better with, with mm -hmm. that assignment yeah. than others. Absolutely. These are kids. Mm -hmm. They are young, and they're going to be kids. Yeah. I mean, you have to be able to handle that, mm -hmm. that aspect. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all right, so I have a question about guidance counselors here. Do you guys go in and do, like, conflict mediation? or Do they do all that, or do you guys help with stuff like that? So, yes, we, we do help with it, okay. but, but it's upon their requests okay. uh, and, and typically depending on what they're mediating or how serious what they're mediating has gotten to they they will often ask us hey can you just be in here or can you be gotcha. part of this and part of that's for the, the safety part because when they do that it's not necessarily just with students sometimes mm -hmm. they bring in parents or outside okay, people as well but but even if it's just students maybe they know we have a close relationship with that student and, mm -hmm. and talk to them regularly and they might want us in there to give our uh, our point of view. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, are you, the SROs doing any education in the classroom or about law enforcement? So we do. Um, it's not. We're we're not setting up a 
formal education mm-hmm. plan. But quite frequently, we do get to ask to speak on things, especially in okay. um, certain mm-hmm. classes about, um, you know, suicide prevention and things of that nature, mm-hmm. drugs. Um, I know definitely at Northview that we've talked in several classes about different things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we do go in there, uh, mm-hmm. but usually the teacher requests us for a specific okay. topic. Okay. And it's so good because um, the high school students are wanting to become law and be in the law enforcement or criminal justice. But it's so like, why do you want to be in criminal justice? So um, we're doing some things this school year to kind of guide them in that way, but also make it look a little different so that they'll feel comfortable (laughs) because I mean, it's, in this generation, they're, it's not cool to be a cop, but right. it is. But they want to be like deep down inside. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a police officer because that's that five year old person in right. them still dreaming to be that person. Yeah. So, um, Mr. Parker has done a great job with allowing us to uh, have a few students just to take out for like two or three days out the month and just have some interactions with them and do some small group sessions because it's a lot that really want to be in the criminal justice, but they just don't have that, you know, like don't know who to talk to or don't want it to look a little, it look like it's what it looks like, but we're going to make it happen. We're going to have some great law enforcement officers here. Yeah. And, and then I get that because, I mean, at the end of the day, their friends are their friends mm-hmm. and, and they still care about what their friends think, yeah. even though they yeah. have this dream. So yeah, that that, that's pressure. not a bad yeah, idea to take them out somewhere mm-hmm. away from that and, and have one-on-ones or a small group. Yep. or yep. And that's where you guys become mentors. Yep. I mean, that you are. I mean, you guys place. are mentors. You, I know safety is your number one, but like you said, I mean, you, you, you form relationships with these kids and they're not going to forget this. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to remember the things you say and, and the actions you take. Yeah. I mean, and yeah. that's that's what's good is that you guys are doing such a good job. Well, this is a funny one. I have to hear this. What is the most creative way a student has tried to get out of trouble? Diverting. Okay. I oh, got you. he's not going to answer this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. We want him to keep his job. Mm-hmm. No, I got no, him. No. I told you this is my partner in crime, so um, <laughs> I got his back. But listen, so I have had, and like I say, I had just started doing a lot of extra work at State So High, so um, I had some kids get in trouble for, you know, maybe the little vapes. I say little because I'm trying to, but the vape or something and I had one that knew that they were like we were looking at him and he come up with his arm around me he said Miss Nikayla what food you like to eat and I'm like well, what you mean he, and so he said I want to take you out to eat and I'm like well why do you want to take me out to eat he said well, I want to pay for you to get some food and I'm like well why and he's like let me tell you I had a vape in the bathroom I'm like oh so you I'm like, so, right, so you're bribing me. And I was like, well, you know what? Olive Garden is coming. Let me. <laughs> or you can take me to Cafe 220. But nah. Yeah, yeah. But listen, I um, but they, they will do little things like that. And I'm like, oh, my God, where do y'all get this money from as a young person? Do you really want <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. We don't want to know. That's, yeah. We don't want to know. But they. they I, I find it best not to ask. <laughs> it was like, um, yeah, so they, they asked me even like, well, do you like getting your nails done? Well, who does your hair? I'm like, well, why are you guys asking this? Do I look bad? <laughs> but I know now that it's because they are trying to get out of trouble. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. They, they, will, they will do things yeah, so. like what's, that. What's the favorite saying? It wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to yeah. shaggy on them. It wasn't me. That's, that is the favorite phrase. <laughs> it wasn't me. It yeah. sounds like even my though, house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even though we saw you with our own eyes, but it was not you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, do students ever ask you for advice? And I know that they do. Um, oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Um, I mean, before summer break, we had students coming in talking about future career plans and mm-hmm. things. And, and I know some of the SRS were helping them fill out uh, different paperwork for mm-hmm. whether it was military or things like yep. or scholarships or trying to find ways to um, – reach their goals. So, yeah, they come and ask us for life advice, relationship advice, (laughs) some things you don't want to know. Yeah, yeah. They are like the Dr. Fields of the law enforcement. (laughs) Yeah, so that, um, so what is, and this is the last one, what is the most and the funniest memorable thing that they have ever asked you? And I'm pretty sure it's a relationship question because. Oh, yeah, it's all the time. (laughs) Um, uh, We had a, we had a student at one point, he asked if, um, we could help him propose. Oh, in high school. And it's like, my friend, you are 17 years old. 
<laughs> I, I think you need to just wait. venture out a little bit first. <laughs> but no, they, they asked, and, and the funny thing was where, where he was wanting it to happen wasn't even in Statesville or Iredell County. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's, it's just the funniest thing, like their imaginations. And But it's so great that they feel that you guys can do anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah, they do. <laughs> right, so we, we definitely appreciate you guys, you and the work that your team uh, does for the state school and the well, school system. And we appreciate you coming into the school because that well, is something that, that has helped us out tremendously. You are a great resource coming in. Um, you do already have relationships with a lot of kids. You do know them. You you talk to them, see them outside of school and work and everything else. But th- just having that res- resource to rely on has helped us tremendously in, in moving forward with our side, too. Well, thank you. But you can't have her full time. Um, I've got we're to have try. Michaela. I have to have Michaela. <laughs> but seriously, on a serious note, we can't thank you guys enough for everything mm-hmm. you're doing for the kids. I mean, being school resource officers is not an easy job. Mm-hmm. Um, day in and day out, I mean, at home I have two boys. I can't imagine being in a school full of kids all the time. <laughs> yeah. I have to come to work to get away. So, I mean, it takes special <laughs> people mm-hmm. to stay with these kids all day. Mm-hmm. And then they go home to their own families. I mean, yeah. it, you know. You guys, you guys are amazing. That's all I can say is just you guys. We appreciate you very much, and we want everyone to know that that you guys are good guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, and yeah. you're there to to keep our kids safe and keep everything in order. And we we just can't tell you how much we appreciate it. And Kayla, you've been in the schools. I've, I hear your stories, <laughs> and yes, those are fun stories. Yeah. But thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And. Thank you for tuning in to Front and Center. Um, hope you've enjoyed our conversation with Sergeant Shins, and we will see you next time. Tune in to the next episode as we share our dedication to transparency, public service, and governance, shining a spotlight on our commitment to keeping you well informed about all things City of Statesville.